protection, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for keeping us on our jobs and at schools, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I just want to lift up all the ministers, our pastors, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for the intercessors, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I'm asking you to watch over them and us, oh Heavenly Father. Keep us safe, oh Heavenly Father. Refresh our minds and our hearts, oh Heavenly Father, so we can go out and do your will, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I just want to thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for fervent prayer church, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for letting them to be in the community, oh Heavenly Father, and making a way for other people, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for allowing them to be help, oh Heavenly Father, to the community, Lord. Lord, you know all of our needs, oh Heavenly Father, and you're something different to every one of us, oh Heavenly Father, but you're everything, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, you are our redeemer, oh Heavenly Father, and I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for sitting high and reaching low, oh Heavenly Father, for your people, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for coming for us, oh Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, for watching over our children, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for clearing up their hearts and their minds, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for watching over our parents and the elderly, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, let them know that they are important in our lives, oh Heavenly Father, and we need them just as much as they need us, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, you are such a good God for waking us up this morning, Lord, because many did not make it, oh Heavenly Father, and I just want to say thank you for that, Lord. And if you never do anything else for us, oh Heavenly Father, you have did enough. Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus over this place, Lord, over everyone in attendance, oh Heavenly Father, over the internet, over the entire world, oh Heavenly Father. Cover them, Lord, in these times, Lord, where we need you more than ever, Lord. We need you, Lord, and we're just pouring out ourselves, oh Heavenly Father, so that we may get more of you, oh Heavenly Father, more of your love and kindness, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, so I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, I thank you, and glory to be God, oh Heavenly Father. In the name of the mighty Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. hallelujah hallelujah you said in your word oh god that when we pray say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Oh, dear Father, we just love you on today and we lift you up, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that there is power in your name, that there is healing in your name that there is deliverance in your name. We thank you, Lord God, that on calling on the name of Jesus, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for being our shepherd, for leading us down the paths of righteousness, for leading us along still waters. We thank you, Lord God, that you have forgiven us, God, for all of our trespasses and that we walk in forgiveness, Lord God, that we lead by forgiveness, that we set the example of forgiveness as we forgive those that may have harmed us or hurt us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you hear our prayers and that you answer us, Lord God, that you send the provisions that we need, that you open up the doors that need to be opened, that you shut the doors that need to be shut. We thank you, Lord God, that you keep us each and every day, Lord God, that you supply every one of our needs, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. That means, Lord God, 
that we don't have to worry about anything, that we don't have to lay and want for anything, that you have given us food, you have given us shelter, you have given us clothing, you have given us transportation, you have given us a home, you have given us everything that we need that pertains to life, and you have given us your word, you have given us your Holy Spirit, you have given us your hand of protection and power so that we can go out and be the righteous vessels that you have called us to be, Lord God. Help us to walk even more so in your word and in your ways, to always lift you up, to consider you in everything that we do, Lord God everything, the big things and the little things, the conversations that we have, the places that we go, the people that we meet. Help us, Lord God, to put on your light and your love and your heart in our lives so that men will see and they will want to run to you, God, the one who can save them, the one who can deliver them, the one who can help them, God. For you told us, Lord God, Come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we thank you, Lord God, for the rest that we have in you. We thank you, Lord God, for the peace that surpasses all of our understanding, that you keep our minds. For you said, God, that if we keep our minds stayed on you, that you would keep us in perfect peace. So we thank you, God, for peace of mind. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your love. And we just reverence you on today, God. For you alone are worthy. We lift you up, God. We pray, Lord God, that if there is any place in our lives that we are coming up short and not serving out and doing the purpose and the plan that you have called us to do, that you will reveal it, Lord God. Light up those dark places, God. Lift up those heavy places, Lord God. Those things that we don't want to submit to you, God, but you are calling us to submit it unto you, God. Help us to give it over to you, God, and surrender to your good and perfect will for our lives, God. We don't want our living to be in vain, Lord God. We don't want our living to be in vain. You have created us with a purpose and a plan, and all of your plans for us are perfect, Lord God. So help us to submit to what it is that you have called us to do, God, to come boldly before your throne of grace, asking you to give us the strength, the wisdom, and the know-how to do those things which you have called us to do. And we'll forever glorify you for God. We thank you for saving our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for saving our lives, for calling us out of darkness when we did not know that we needed a Savior. You came down with your unconditional love, and you lifted us up. You called us your own. We're so thankful to be your children, Lord God. We love you. You are an awesome Father. You are such a great, great Father, and we worship you. We will never get tired of worshiping you, Lord God. Let us pour ourselves out before you, not hold back anything that is of you, to give you all the glory and the praise that is due unto you. And we thank you for it. We glorify you coming to this place. Come into our hearts. Make us new. Make us new, God. Help us to transform our mind by your word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Give God glory right there. If you thank God that he saves you, you got a right to give him praise. Come on and give God glory. Come on and give God glory. We glorify your name this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all came to give God glory. Come on. Put your hands together. Hey. Come on. Come on. Come on. The song says, be still and know that he is God. Because <laughs> the battle is already won on your behalf. It's already won. So be still and go ahead and praise God for who you know he is. It's already done. The battle is won. 
Shout now. 
mine. Can y'all just say that today? It's mine, it's mine. If you really believe it. <laughs> it's mine, it's mine. No matter what I'm facing. It's mine, it's mine. I may want to throw in the towel. But it's mine, it's mine. Victory is mine. Oh my God. Victory. Today is mine. Today is mine. Today is mine. See, the devil wants you to think that you don't have the victory. But I came to encourage you this morning that victory is yours. You got to let the enemy know, no, nope, not today. Not today. Not tomorrow. Because victory it belongs to me. Why? Because I am I am his child. And he has victory. So as long as God has victory and I am his child, it's mine, it's mine. 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 Oh my God. Victory is mine. Victory. Oh, it's mine. It's mine. Glory to God. Glory to God. Victory is ours. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. You may be seated if you can. Thanking God for the victory on today to be alive in our right minds and with our health and strength. We praise God on this morning, welcoming each and every one of you to this worship and prayer service. Praise, giving God all the glory and honor for all that he is because he is ours. We are his children. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be called a child of God. Amen. God bless you and welcome on today. Also welcoming those who are viewing us via the internet on this morning. God bless you for tuning in to our worship and prayer service here on this Sunday morning. We are so glad to have you. Praying that you already have been blessed as we continue in our worship right now by worshiping the Lord and our giving. Amen. Amen. I found this scripture I want to read. And it's from Proverbs 19 and 17. You know, we give in many, many ways. The Lord wants us to give always happily and not grudgingly. And it says in Proverbs, whoever is generous to the poor leads to the Lord, lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. Proverbs 22 and 16, whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gifts to the rich they only come to poverty and in saying that i just remember this giving as we do here at fervent prayer in so many different ways in our community and even reminding the women on next saturday we have an opportunity to give more so to the poor because we're going to be helping those at john marshall if you haven't sound, signed up yet to give to the poor remember that that god says he will repay and for god to repay who there's nobody better than that, amen? And he pays in awesome ways and in good ways, more than just money, finances, health, blessings, so many ways that we cannot even mention. So right now we thank God for uh, his generosity to us, but our generosity right now and obeying his word and giving as he uh, asks for in his word, you know, in our tithes and our offerings so that others can be blessed when they come into the house of God, when they need to hear a word that will encourage their heart to help them step away from depression, you know, or, or just discouragement, to be uplifted and delivered. So we praise God for any of those ways of all of you by giving so that others can be blessed as well as yourselves. We pray that uh, all of you have had a chance to give on this morning, electronically or otherwise. And right now we want to stand and repeat our giving affirmation, thanking God and believing in Him, what He will do for us. Not expecting anything, but knowing that He is such an awesome God and loves us so much. And he has so many promises in his words for blessings in, in our giving that we trust in him. Please repeat after me. I believe.
that I receive God's best on my seed sown today. I believe that because I am a giver, God is raising up others who will use their influence, their authority, and their power to help me. Therefore, I believe that I am abundantly supplied spiritually, physically, and financially in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Please follow directions of the ushers. Good morning, FPC. Take a look at what's happening this week at Fervent Prayer. Wake up with Pastor Jackson on First Hour Prayer, live on Facebook, weekdays at 6.30 a.m. and 7.15 a.m. Catch our services online anytime or worship with us Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Good morning, FPC family. I'm Mrs. Faye. And I'm Minister Bianca River. We are lead teachers here at FPC for Children's Church. And at this time, we would love to have your children come and worship with us. If you have children between the ages of 4 to 12, please raise your hand and an usher will come and welcome them over at Children's Church. Hurry, because we fill up fast. Can't wait to see you. Save the date for these upcoming events at FPC. One Vision Media presents the grand opening of Free World Studios, happening this Saturday from 3 to 6 p.m., and we want you in the building. There'll be a live DJ, free food, $25 photo shoots, live interviews, and much more. Vendors and sponsors wanted. Call or text 317-832-0298 for more information on how you can be part of this major event. Need a live band? Maybe a studio for content creation? Perhaps you need a space to host your next live event. No matter what the need, Get Well Now Entertainment has you covered. Call today and let us help you with your next idea. Why get well soon when you can get well now? Our vision is to promote healing and deliverance through the power of prayer and faith around the world. And we need your help. Please be sure to share this broadcast with someone who needs it today. The best way to get more information about our groups, events, and anything involving Fervent Prayer Ministries is through our app, available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. If you or your family are in need of support in any way, please contact our member services team by phone at 317-665-8659 or by email at administrator at fpcindy.com. That's all for this week. Let's get back to worship. All right. Thank you all for being here with us today. We appreciate you so much. Good to have you all here with us in worship. God bless you. Thank you. Let's give God praise for those who have joined us across America in eight different countries. We thank God for them. Glory to God. Well, it's good to see you all on this morning and uh, missed you all on last week. We thank God for Pastor DeLosa bringing the word. Come on, let's give God praise for her. And uh, also, we thank God on uh, last Wednesday, Evangelist Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer brought a mighty word like it was Sunday morning. Amen. God bless you. So we thank God for the powerful, powerful word that was released in this place. There are a couple other things. I just want you to please be sure to mark your calendars. Um, on the 27th of this month, we'll be here for our helps ministry meeting that's our volunteer and paid helps ministry team we need you to be here for that it's going to be absolutely amazing so please be sure to mark your calendar um, I believe the time for that is 10 a.m. for helps ministry on the 27th also our meeting with the ministers will be at 9 a.m. so if you are a minister uh, if you are a deacon, elder, pastor, evangelist, prophet, uh, all of that. We need you to be here 
before our meeting with the ministers. I have some things to share with you. And that is our time where we can share together and uh, I can pour into you and we can encourage one another. So that's August the 27th. Um, ministers at 10. Uh, I'm sorry, ministers at 9 and helps ministry at 10. We also have breakfast for you. So uh, you don't have to eat anything before you come. You're going to be tremendously blessed. Um, we also have another event that's going to be happening next weekend here at the church from 3 to 6. There will be vendors, bounce houses, food trucks, and the grand opening for Free World Studios. <laughs> and I think Brother Corey is uh, the tip of the spear on that. Uh, photography, videography, and some other things he's going to be doing um, with Get Well Now Entertainment. And also, um, there's going to be body, the incredible body contouring. And that's Minister Nikki. So, and there are a few other businesses. We've got a lot of entrepreneurs here, but these are some of the businesses that are starting out. So, that's going to be showcased on next weekend. Uh, is that Saturday? So that's Saturday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. All meetings and events start on time here at the Fergin Prep Church. Uh, so it will start at 3. Now whether it ends at 6 is a whole other thing. But we start everything on time. Amen. Come on, just stand to your feet real quick. Glory to God. How many of y'all really glad to be here today? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is, it is so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to lift up the name of the Lord just one more time before we preach. I'm going to uh, also ask Pastor Tamiko to pray before I preach. Um, but I want to, anybody have a sister whose name is Barbara? Just real quick, if you're here and you have a sister whose name is Barbara, just raise your hand real quick. And if you're online watching, because we thank God for our folks who are online. And if you have a sister whose name is Barbara, just let us know. I need to pray for her. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I like that song that the team was singing. Oh, I don't know all of it. But uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Cookie to come and kind of help me with that. There was a blessing in that song. There was a lifting in that song. There's an anointing on that song. Amen. And uh, we're just going to sing a little bit of that. Um, Amaya is still here. Where's Amaya at? She kind of come, come and help us with that. How many of y'all know sometimes you have to have an old God moment? Yeah. And Pastor Tomiko, you can just be ready right over here with a microphone. Um, amen. So y'all kind of come on. Ready? One, two, three, four. All right, so we'll do it over again. Y'all be ready? All right, y'all ready? <laughs> y'all ready? All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Here we go. One. So, so you take it. You take it and lead us off on it with the sticks. Come on. Everybody say... Don't be lazy with it. Oh, Come on, let me hear y'all. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Now bring it down. Bring it down just a little bit. We're going to hear y'all say it. Come on. Come on. A little louder now. Come on, a little louder. Anybody come to worship? Lift your voice and say, oh. Now listen, listen. I want y'all to say it with some authority. I want y'all to say it with some authority. Just like you, just like you tell somebody to get out. Or just like you tell somebody to stop. I want you to give us that kind of authority, all right? Y'all ready? Everybody. 
everybody say, everybody say, oh, 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 oh. Let me hear you now. Let me hear you now. Let me hear you now. Everybody say. Everybody say. Now, I know y'all ain't been saved all y'all life, so I want y'all to put y'all body into it. I don't know how to dance, but I can move. And I need y'all to move, because y'all a little lazy this morning. I rebuke that lazy spirit in the name of Jesus to come off of you. And whatever you worried about or concerned about is not bigger than God. We save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to sing this song. And we're going to move on it. Come on, y'all move a little bit. Ooh. Here we go. Everybody sing. Everybody sing. Over here sing. Today we say leap. How many of y'all remember that? Leap. That's what we used to say. You say I. You say I don't know how to leap. Now, if you if you don't like getting all the way up off your feet, just give me this. Leap, 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 leap. For joy, leap, 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 leap for joy, leap, 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 leap for joy, leap, leap, leap for joy, leap, leap. Leap for joy, leap, leap, 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 leap for joy, leap, 
Leap, leap for joy. Leap, leap, leap for joy. Leap, leap, leap for joy. Lift your voices and give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated if you can. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Tamiko. Amen. You're going to be blessed. Y'all already blessed going to be blessed some more. Turn with me to the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. And we have been in a series of teachings, four pillars of the Fervent Prayer Church, prayer, faith, healing, and deliverance. And we are people promoting healing and deliverance through the power of prayer and faith around the world. So over these last several months, we have been focused in on teaching and preaching on prayer, faith, and now here we are with healing. And the Lord willing, in the last quarter of this year, we will move into deliverance. And I think the ascending order of how we have been talking about it, prayer, faith, healing, and deliverance is appropriate because you cannot get to deliverance without prayer and faith. And healing, once you have been healed emotionally, physically, spiritually, then comes deliverance. And those are four areas that God put in my heart before the year started and really at the beginning of the year that we really need to focus on. We are living in what the Bible calls the last days. We are living in what the Bible calls perilous times. And even in the city of Indianapolis, we're faced with some great challenges. The prosecutor 
Prosecutor Mears have indicated there have been more prosecutions for gun crimes where juveniles are concerned than in the history of the city. That's a lot. And so uh, the folks who are involved in these kinds of activities are getting younger and younger and younger. And as I've prayed about this over the last several years, one of the things that God has shown me is that as a nation, and then more particularly as black people, the nation, of course, has fallen away from God. And black people, we as black folks, used to be closer to God than we are now. More of our lives were wrapped up in God. We called it church. We called it whatever you want to call it. We were more spiritual. And as a race of people, we were very, very close to God because at that time, that's all we had. But how many of you all know that you have been blessed? and you're living a life and living lives that our forefathers did not or could not afford to live. The problem with being so blessed is that there is the potential for you to forget about God. Many, some of you all, many of you all, in person, online, you got it going on. You a big baller and shot caller. Your life is a, a gravy train on biscuit wheels. <laughs> you live in it. And you see it. People say they live in their best life, and many are. God has no problem with that. And for those who are on the way to that place of increase and prosperity, God has no problem with you having an abundance. But what he does have a problem with is moving from first place to some place. Because for many, God is not second. He's not third. He's not even fourth. He is just some place. And as a result of our falling away from him, he has allowed us to be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when God showed me that, I had to go back to the Bible, CC, and look at it. And all throughout the Bible from the Old Testament into the New Testament, but particularly in the Old Testament, the people of God would get close to him. And when they were close to him, they were blessed. And when they were close to him, they were healthy. And when they were close to him, they were wealthy. But they would then fall away from him. And whenever they would fall away from him, he would deliver them over into the hand of the enemy so that he could get them back to him. And this generation is what the Bible would call an untoward generation. And the word untoward means difficult to deal with. And how many of you all would attest to the fact that you got some folk in your life that are difficult to deal with? How many of you all would attest to the fact that you got some young people that are difficult to deal with? I had a reverential fear for my father and my mother. And they reinforced that with a belt and a switch. How many of y'all remember the word whooping? That's Greek and Hebrew to a lot of young people. Whooping, what is that? If you 40 or 50 years old, some of y'all say you don't have to be that old, y'all know what a whooping is. But they kept us straight. And we used to get a whooping for everything. Running in and out. Y'all ain't going to be running in and out of this house. And don't let flies in. I'm an expert fly catcher. You're going to get a whooping. Now, I'm not saying that was the right thing to do, but there was more discipline is what I'm getting at. 
And so we've fallen, and you don't have to take my word for it. Just think about your own life. Think about how much time you spend in the word. Think about how much time you spend in prayer. Think about how much time you spend in worship, whether online and in person. Think about how much time God is a part of your life versus everything else. And if everything else have more place in your life than things of God, you got to make the change. So how do we get back? How, how do we get out of the mess that we're in? I'm not going to go through all the statistics because many of you all know them. But how do we get, it, how do we get out of this mess? I was on my way home uh, from the church and I was at 30th and uh, Post Road, and I looked over there, and there was a shooting. There was a car, and then another car pulled up, shot somebody three times. It was a 16-year-old, and uh, he did not survive. Saw the family out there in the grass and all that scene right there. And then somebody from uh, Minister Nikki uh, texted and said there was a family that wanted to have their funeral here at the church. I thought it was the same young man, but it was another young man who was 16 who had got shot and killed in Cumberland. And it's happening just that fast that you can't hardly keep up. But the answer to the problem is us. I didn't get no, I need y'all to talk back to me. I, I said the answer to the problem is us. Come on, tell somebody it's you. It, because what did he say in 2 Chronicles 7 14? I'm in prophetic mode. He said, if what my which indicates not all people are his people. He created everybody, but not everybody is his people called by his name. He is our father, but then uh, Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. Well, that's heavy, isn't it? He is our father, but Jesus said, your father is the devil. Now, who's, who's your daddy? <laughs> Ask somebody you came with, who's your daddy? Come on, I'm talking about in the spirit. I'm talking about in the spirit. Come on. Now, how do we know if you act like him, then we know that you are his. But if you act like the other one, if you're keeping up hell all the time, who's your daddy? And there are believers who can present themselves as children of God but really be children of darkness but the tree is known by the fruit that it bears come on y'all I'm not here to condemn you but I'm here to challenge you and you know your own life we all gonna be challenged we all gonna be tempted we all gonna be tested but it's up to you, it's incumbent upon you to do all you can to make sure that you are doing what God said do. And don't fall into the trap of just saying I'm human. Don't fall into the trap of saying that the grace of God, now, when I say the trap, I mean it this way. Keep on doing the same stuff over and over and over again and then justify it with what you're hearing out in the community <laughs> this is for me too I like to say to myself I'm dead to sin alive to God I'm dead to sin I'm alive to God I'm dead to sin I'm alive to God and I have to keep saying that to myself I'm dead to sin I'm alive to God I'm dead to sin I'm alive to God that's faith that's releasing my faith to help me stay on the right track <laughs> are you there in Mark 9 Y'all still love me this morning? So once I get out of here, you ain't have to worry about me. <laughs> Don't go to a church that ain't going to tell you what I'm telling you. You need to be in a place where they're going to challenge your behind. Amen? See, Minister Betty, if we're living in the last day, the Bible said the last day will be like the times of Noah. The earth is filled with violence. I was reading an article and I shared it on my Facebook page that um, I think it was, I don't recall the city, but it said it was awash with guns and the shootings are skyrocketing, meaning that people are just shooting each other. People are buying guns, everybody walking around with guns and, and parking spaces or getting cut off in traffic, just any stupid thing, people are shooting each other. 
So I understand the spiritual significance of that. The Bible said in the last day, um, the, it'll be like the days of Noah. And the days of Noah, the earth was filled with what? Violence. Wars and rumors of wars. People, a lot of believers are not expecting Jesus to come back. We're having such a good time, we're not even expecting Jesus to come back. But guess what? He's coming. Ask your neighbor, will you be ready? <laughs> and if you're not ready, get ready. Because I would hate for you to go to sleep and wake up tomorrow morning and the resurrection have taken place and discover that you didn't make it. There are a lot of things happening now in our time that we have never seen before, that we didn't think could happen, but they're happening. Jesus is soon to return. But let me show you how to deal with what's dealing with us currently. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 9, beginning verse number 14, and I'm going to read it from the King James Version, and it says, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Jesus' disciples are gathered around and the scribes who uh, are experts in the law. That's who the scribes were. They were experts in the Mosaic law. And they were questioning with the disciples, a, a multitude. That means there were uh, thousands of people that, they're questioning them. And the scribes did that. And in verse number 15, it says, and straightway, which means immediately, all the people when they beheld him, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. So at first they were all gathered around this scene of questioning the disciples. And you have to be careful of who is around you and who you are around because uh, there was a man there with a son who needed help but the disciples were so busy arguing with people who were never going to believe them, them or the way that they were living and they were all involved in that conversation and that argument but when Jesus showed up it shifted the attention from the disciples back to him. And all of the people began running to him and they were amazed and, they, and, and, and began saluting him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Now in verse number 16, Jesus almost got up got caught up in the same conversation with the scribes, the experts in the law. What are you questioning them about? But just then, here comes a man who has a son which had a dumb spirit, underline the word dumb spirit. He had a dumb spirit. Now, it is important that we be able to identify the spirit that we're having a problem with. If you can't get up out of the bed and go to work every morning, just say, I rebuke you, lazy spirit, in the name of Jesus. If you got a problem eating too much, just say, I rebuke you, glutton spirit, in the name of Jesus. If you got problems with migraine headaches, I rebuke you, migraines, in the name of Jesus. Are y'all tracking with me? Because you never want to be at the point where you say, I don't know what's going on. We got to be able to identify these spirits. Your, chi your child disobedient, I rebuke you, disobedient spirit, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> and, and here it is in verse 18, he says, And wheresoever, this dumb spirit, he says, And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. Pineth means waste away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Now, the purpose of demon possession is to destroy and to kill. 
And what that dumb spirit was trying to do, which was the young man was deaf and he could not talk, he could not uh, talk, and, 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 and what the demon was trying to do is destroy him. Couldn't just leave it where he couldn't talk and have that issue, but he'd throw him into the fire and uh, just trying to destroy him. Understand that the purpose of demon possession is to destroy. And people ask the question, can Christians be possessed with demons? Well, ask yourself about that. Have you, been, have you ever been unforgiving? Have you ever been mad too long? Have you ever been sad too long? Have you ever been depressed too long? See, you thought somebody demon-possessed has stringy hair and, and running all around looking all crazy. No. <laughs> How long are you going to allow that to have you? You don't like certain people? Can't get along with people? <laughs> Some of y'all want me to go back to Hawaii, glory to God. But I'm here and I feel good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Help me with me. Let, let, I, want, I want to get delivered. I want to get free. I don't like this. I don't like the way I'm talking. I don't like the way I don't like I don't like the way I'm thinking. I don't like what I'm doing. Help me with me. Amen. And he's, these demons are trying to kill this boy. They got total control of this boy. Glory to God. And watch this part. I think it's very important that we see this. And I spake to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. I spake to your disciples to cast them out, to throw these demons out. Now understand, up to this point, the disciples had the power to do it. Jesus had given them power over all the power of the enemy. He gave them power to cast out devils. He, came, he gave them power to heal the sick. He gave them power. So they had the authority to do it. And the man says to Jesus, he says, I, I, I brought him to the church, and the church couldn't help him. And how many of you all know we're in that time right now where we'll come to church and have some church, but people leave with the same problems that they came with? If they were mean when they came and then have 15 minutes of joy and happiness, when they leave, they still mean. Amen. And we got to get to the point where when we come to church, when we come to worship, when we come to the house of prayer, that we are better when we leave than when we came. You sit next to a person that can get you free right now. Tell them you sat, you sat, you sat next to the right person. And if you get any closer than you are now, you're going to jump up off this seat and give God glory because how many of you all know that one spark can start a whole fire? <laughs> Y'all better come and get me. I feel an anointing rising in the room. Joel, I never want it to be said that you bring me the problem, preacher man, prayer man, and, and, and you can't do nothing about it. We saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, and the demons are having a holiday. COVID-19 challenged me. Because every person that you come in contact with that had COVID, uh, if, if we are operating according to this, I'm saying we got to get there, y'all. Maybe, maybe we didn't, you know, we, we recovered. The Bible said we would recover, but I'm after, I'm after what I saw Jesus doing, and that's the get well now healing anointing. We don't want to just stop at recovery. Thank God for recovery. Praise the Lord. But I want to get to the point where we got so much authority and so much power that we're operating in it because we do have it, but we're operating in it that we can do like Jesus said when Peter came to him and got in his face, Peter being the lead disciple, and told Jesus, you're not going to die. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Look right at the
the disciple he loved and said, get behind me. Our parents used to speak with authority. The men and women of God used to have authority, Brother Harris. You could sit a child right there and the child start acting up in Muncie, Indiana, New Jerusalem Church and Bishop Cody, uh, you'd be acting up and, 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 and you feel some kind of pressure. He's still in the pulpit. And you turn around and he's just doing like this. And his finger looked like it was that big. And you settle down. Bishop Cody would pick up the anointing bottle, the olive oil bottle and drink it in the pulpit. Now, I was a kid. I didn't know what was going on. I thought, I was like, my God, who is this? What manner of man is this? He drinking the oil that we anoint people with. But he was revered. How many of y'all remember your mother and father used to give you a command and you straighten up? Now you tell kids to do something, they go in the room and close the door. Come on. We got to start walking in authority. You got parents afraid of their kids. Listen, your kids step to you, you ought to, you, you ought to call up all of the Holy Ghost that's on the inside. And, and I... Let me stay in the Holy Ghost right here. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We, we got a different generation now. We can't handle them. The school can't handle them. The police can't handle them. And we see it in the Bible because in a parallel text, there was a, a couple of men in what they called the gatherings and you couldn't go past that place. You put sh shackles on them, they bust the shackles. You chain them up, they break the chain. And they were violent and so violent, nobody could even go past there. But when Jesus showed up, I said when Jesus showed up, I said when Jesus showed up. See, when you show up, Jesus is in you. The Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Where iniquity did abound, grace did much more abound. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. He's in you, he's in you. I wish that we could get about 35 believers to say, not on my watch. Come on. Sorry. Somebody say, not on my watch. Brother Greg, I was in Hawaii visiting with my daughter and her birthday. And Pastor D, uh, she had vertigo recently, so long flights. A little challenging right now. She couldn't go. It would be nice if she could have went and said, y'all pray. So next time she could go, we were at the Mar I was at the Marriott in a pretty nice room, but I wanted to see the big room at the top. And I said, in the name of Jesus, bring Pastor D right here. Amen. It was nice. Anyway, so I was with my daughter, and um, I wasn't going to rent a car. And she said, Dad, I want you to rent a car. Uh, I said, okay. And I shouldn't have because I think she did that because then I was a chauffeur. <laughs> she had me driving all around Hawaii and doing some everything. And I had taken her to a photo shoot because she models there. She's one of Hawaii's top models and she models there. And uh, I, was take, I was bringing her back from the photo shoot and I had some water. And I drunk the water and it went down the wrong pipe. So I'm at the light. Now, how many of y'all ever did that? I didn't know when you get older... Stuff just be happening. <laughs> they didn't tell us about that. You know, when you get in your 50s, stuff be happening. You get out of the car, and the next day you got a hamstring pull. I mean, it's got... <laughs> drink some water. I mean, I used to drink water and just fall on my face and everything. But at 50, you got to be careful. And it went down the wrong pipe. So I'm, I'm behind the wheel, and the light is red, and I'm coughing, and, <laughs> and, and Mariah's sitting there, and Mariah, she's like super extrovert. She's getting ready to get out the car, snatch me out the car, said, you got to bend over. And I'm like, we at the light. <laughs> she, 
She done opened the car door, get ready. I said, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And Brother Rob, I'll never forget this. Now, now, she's growing in the Lord. So she said, yellow, no, not on my watch. Did you get that? Just change the words up a little bit. She said, yellow, no, not on my watch. And she said it in a commanding way. And instantly I got straightened up. I said, well, Lord, she's growing. <laughs> I look at it another way. Hale trying to take me out. And she said, no, not on my watch. And I think we got some people up in here where your situation is choking and you need to slap on it and slap on it and say, not on my watch. Some of y'all got some children wild out and they doing stuff they ain't supposed to. You are not, not on my watch. <laughs> Brother Jones, gonna make, it's going to make good sense. I'm going to show y'all how to do something here in just a moment. Y'all got time for this? The, the church couldn't do it. Couldn't get the demons out. Why? Because they were too busy arguing with people who were church people. The scribes would be the equivalent of church people. They were experts in the law. What is the law? The Mosaic law. They were experts in the Pentateuch, the first five books of Moses, the Torah. They were experts in the law, but they didn't have an anointing. They were experts in the law, but they had no authority. They were experts in the law, but they didn't know Jesus. Notice the Bible says that when Jesus showed up, the people stopped arguing with them and came to Jesus. But the scribes, the experts in the law, the church people still wanted to argue. That's the reason why the Bible says no man that wore entangle himself in the affairs of this life. That he might please him who called him to be a soldier. And they were entangled in arguing. With the experts. And Jesus says in verse number 19, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. <laughs> faithless, the Greek word, and I'm not going to tell you what the Greek word is because you won't remember it anyway. But the Greek, Greek word for faithless meant that they had the authority. They had faith. Didn't mean they didn't, have, they didn't have faith. They had faith. But the Greek word there means that they didn't use it. They had faith but they didn't use the faith they had. And how many of us would attest to the fact that we got the power? Oh, I got the faith for it. But, but, but I'm just not using what I got. There's a difference in asking somebody to do something and telling somebody to do something. And, and it depends on the situation. So sometimes the situation requires that you ask somebody to do it. And then at other times, the situation requires that you tell them to do it. And if you listen to your own conversation with people who are around you, and you listen to the conversation of some, some other people, there are people who uh, will say, can you do this? Can you get that for me? Can you do this for me? How many of y'all have ever heard yourself? You say to them, can you do that? Can you please? Now, if you tell me, if you say, can you do it? You leave it open for me to say, no, I cannot. Right? Can you open the door for me? Well, most of us, we, we pretty good and, and we say, okay. But you got some real other people. They just straight up tell you no. And it just throws you off. And you get mad. But you did say can you? Or please. And, and there are some situations that don't require please. It don't require could you? It don't require can you? It's do it. Open that door. 
Close that door. If we're driving down the highway and somebody opens the door, I'm not going to say, can you close the door? Some of y'all, if you're riding down the street and somebody opens the door of your car while you're driving down the street, you're going to come all the way out of the anointing. And you're going to say, shut that. door that's not a ask that's a tell that's a command are you getting that Jesus they had the power they just were not using it and Jesus said how long do I have to deal with this I've trained you I've showed you how to do it I've given you time and time again demonstration and you still are not doing what I told you to do and all these hundreds of years later faithless not that we don't have the faith we're just not using it. So what does Jesus say? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. The spirit, the spirit that was in, in that boy, it got worse. And I need, to, I need you to understand, when you really start operating in the power and the anointing of God, sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. You're trying to do for God, you're trying to live for God, you're trying to do the right thing, and that, that demon really start acting up. And for some of y'all, you right on the precipice of deliverance, and instead of going back, keep on pressing forward. Ah, but something interesting happens. Immediately the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground. He started wallowing and he, and he started foaming and there he is on his son is on the ground. The man is standing there and his son is on the ground wallowing. And it's the same as it's always been and now it's worse. And I'm standing in front of Jesus. And watch what happens next. Watch what happens next. And he asked the father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? <laughs> now my son is wallowing on the ground and you want to have a conversation with me <laughs> come on I want y'all to get this picture in your head I mean the boy is that he died of foaming at the mouth and he's down there and he said well how long he's been how long he been like this Jesus is never in a crisis Jesus is never stressed out <laughs> your failure to use your faith is not his right now emergency and too many of us are responding to people in, in an emergency. See, if you call me, it's my choice whether I answer the phone or not. Some people, you don't even need to answer the phone. You just need to call out the Spirit because they're calling you about the same thing that they called you about. If somebody always asks you for money, I, I, I rebuke that broke spirit on you. Amen. Jesus was having a conversation with him. How long has this been going on? He said it's since he was a child. And oft times it cast him to the fire and to the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, if you can do anything. Now, notice where the man's faith was. Because of him arguing so long with the experts in the law and Jesus' disciples were there, he didn't know whether Jesus could do it or not. And there are people in the church now, they don't know if the church got power or not because we've been messing around so long. It's not hard to have church. It's not hard to have a worship service. They happen all over America on Sunday mornings. And pretty much all in the same way. But how often do you go online and you hear about demons cast out? Miracles and signs and wonders. Come on, I'm trying to raise your heights real quick. Because if we don't expect that, we don't get that. If we don't come expecting that, we don't get that. People ought to be able to bring their children in here and we cast devils out. I didn't say lay hands on them and pray for them. I'm saying that we use our voice. When you're casting devils out, I don't even have to put my hand on you. These are unclean spirits. Unclean spirits, glory to God. 
He said, if you can do it, Jesus, have compassion on us. <laughs> Help us. And Jesus said unto him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Don't put it on me. He's saying, if you can do it, Jesus. Jesus said, no, if you can believe, Tanya. All things are possible to those that believe. I like this next part. <laughs> I like this next part because remember, he, had, he greeted Jesus as teacher or master at the first part. But in verse number 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe Help my unbelief. He greeted Jesus as master teacher. But by now, he goes from master teacher to Lord. <laughs> oh, he's ready now. He's ready now. He says, Lord, help my unbelief. The unbelief that is in me, I need you to help me to get delivered from that. Help my unbelief. And I think there are a few of us here today and those who are online that need to say, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief, God. Help my unbelief. I don't believe you to the extent that I need to believe in you and trust you. Help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the people came running together, here come the people again. But before they could get there, he rebuked. He did what? He did what? He rebuked the foul spirit, the unclean spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more. Did you see how to do it? Identify the spirit. Charge the spirit to come out. And then tell the spirit, don't come back around here. Don't come back. Enter him no more. Because here's the thing. When the spirits come out, they leave for a while, then they come back. They come back. And they want to see if they can get back in. But if they can get back in, the Bible says you'll be seven times worse than before. Why? because they don't want to have to come out again. So not only are we going to cast you out, but we're going to tell you, don't come back no more. And when that happened, the Bible says the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. He went from all of that wallowing and all of that commotion and then he was totally and completely healed so much peace that they thought he was dead <laughs> how many y'all ready for that kind of life that you got so much peace that you can't hardly believe it that means there's a significant difference in how the situation was and how the situation is now. And be careful of being around people who enjoy drama. Because there's some people, their day is not complete unless they caught up in something. <laughs> Amen. Brother Smith, did you hear that? No. Because we're on camera, I got to stay up here. Boy, I want to run all around the place. Oh, here it is. That word rebuked. In the Greek, that word rebuke means to command. And that's what Jesus did. To command with authority. To command with authority. And when Jesus 
commanded. See, he rebuked. What does that mean? He commanded. So we have to learn how to give commands. Because one of the things they don't teach us in school is how to give commands. You're taught how to take a command. You're taught how to follow instructions. But there comes a time in your life as a believer that you need to take charge. And you need to give a command. You got it. Because you're of your father. <laughs> While we were in Hawaii, my daughter wanted to go parasailing and, and ski jet, the jet ski on the water. So no problem with the jet skiing. Never done the parasailing. So I said, okay. And we, and we were going to go do it because I believe I can do all things. I'm not going to be in fear. And I was in no fear. As, but I know what a kite feels like now. And as we began to go up, I was in no fear. And I was going up. And the boat looked like a little speck. And we were fine until the wind started blowing. And the first thing came from my mind when Peter saw the waves. <laughs> When those, when those, when that, and I looked behind me, and on the parachute, it had a big old smiley face. And it came up in my spirit, don't worry. <laughs> and, 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 and up there like that, up there like that, they can't hear you on the boat. If you wave, they don't know if you're saying, get me down, or this is great. And we paid for the low contract. But you know, God does exceeding abundantly above what you ask. So they had us way up there, like 700 feet. We paid for the 300 feet, which is really, you know, and we way up there. But before we got on there, we were in the car waiting. And my daughter loved music, and she had the music playing. And the Holy Spirit said, now remember, you got to turn the car on so the battery don't run down. So I did once. And then I forgot. So the car, we tried to start it, it's a rental car, and it wouldn't start because you're playing the music and the battery don't run down. So I said, well, I got AAA. I'll call AAA and they'll come out and, and get us going. Or I'll call the rental company and they'll come out and get us going. And my daughter said, no. Uh, and a guy walked by, he was a security guard, and got his attention. He went down and got some jumper cables. And he came back with the jumper cables. And the guy next to us had a big truck. And my daughter jumps out <laughs> and tells him, we need you to jump this car. <clears throat> she doesn't take a charge and everything. Man, I'm watching this. It's like, whoa. And the guy couldn't get his truck in there. He, he was back then, so he went out and he tried to come in forward. He couldn't get his truck in there. So he couldn't get in there, so he couldn't give us a jump. So my, my daughter goes out there, Mariah, and there's this Jeep coming, and she flags the Jeep down. And the guy didn't want to do it, but she told him to get in that spot. <laughs> and he, had, he was, the, the Jeep was a rental car. And he got in the spot, and she go, when, once he got, before he even got parked, she goes up there on his hood and starts taking the thing off. I said, Mariah, you got to ask the man if you can do that. And she, there was three guys, and she told the other two guys, put those over there and get that over there. And she told the other guy, she said, now get out here. And she you know, took charge of the whole situation. The man didn't even know how to get the hood open. And she done, she done showed him how to get the hood open and, and all of that and, and showed him what to do. And, and, and boom, we started up. And one, one guy said, boy, She's smart, and she know how to take charge. I said, yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> See, some of us, we waiting on AAA. Did you hear what I said? Some of us, <laughs> we waiting on the rental car company to come. When, what, when your answer is right around you, if you will take charge. Some of y'all waiting on somebody to say you need a raise instead of you taking charge and saying, you know what, I've been on time, I've done my job, uh, uh, I'd like to have a raise. 
Why are you waiting for somebody else to take charge of your life? Take charge of your own life. Do a Mariah. Jump out. Tell them to get in here. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody, take charge. Take charge. Come on, tell them with victory in your voice. Take charge. And none of those men refused to do what my daughter told them to do. None of them. Now, as the father, I was just there. <clears throat> I was watching all of it. Now, we won't get the car started, but I let her do her thing. And I just sat back. At the end of the day, we're going to get out of here. At the end of the day, the car will be started because I'm the father. And I'm going to get us out of here. And, and when it was all said and done, we were driving away. She said, see, I'm a survivor. She said, I have learned how to survive. And this is not the first time that she has done that. That was a little different from me because I'm just a little bit more laid back. But she's not laid back at all. I mean, she jumped right in there, and people respond to that. Listen, God has given you all the authority you need. Your breakthrough is closer than you think. You waiting on somebody to give you a break? Make your own break. You waiting on somebody to give you an opportunity? Create your own opportunity. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Glory to God. That's healing. He was healed that day. whole life different whole life changed not because of the scribes not because of the disciples but the father's faith Jesus helped his unbelief by strengthening his faith in commanding that spirit and all of us this week you're going to have situations where you command the spirit your words have power your words have power not just for casting out evil spirits but also for bringing you what you want what did the prophecy of Isaiah say your words Rhonda will not return to you empty but they will prosper and accomplish the thing you send them to. Where, where are you sending your words? How long this been going on? How long this been going on? Just ask yourself, how long has this been going on? Maybe you have a spirit of fear. How long has this been going on? Maybe you have a spirit of worry. How long has this been going on? Maybe there's a spirit of lack. How long has this been going on? I want to make the altar call right now for those of you who say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Help me with my faith. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you don't love Jesus but it's an issue of faith. Jesus ministered to the man. If you can believe, all things are possible to, to those that believe. If you can believe, all things are possible. And that touched something in the man. And he shrieked with tears. Lord, I believe I can't even say it like he said it but he another text says because this is in one of the other two gospels he shrieked one of the gospels says he shrieked 
with tears. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When I was on the airplane, that eight-hour flight, and the turbulence, didn't have a whole lot of turbulence, but when there was turbulence, I'm just sitting there, and I'm thinking about the things that God has called me to do. And one of, the, my, one of my favorite phrases now is, I must stand before Caesar. Because that's what the Apostle Paul said when he was out there on the Aegean Sea, and it looked like they were all going to die. But he said, I must stand before Caesar. In other words, I can't die here because I haven't done that yet. Now, how many of y'all ready to say that I shall live and not die? to declare the works of the Lord and do what God has called me and gifted me to do. I'm going to tell somebody it ain't over. <laughs> come on, I want to pray for your faith. You can just come. I want to pray for your faith. 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 Don't mean you're not saved. Don't mean you don't love the Lord. I want to pray for your faith. I want to pray for your confidence. Uh, I want to pray for your confidence. I want to pray for your confidence. To believe God, to trust God. And those of you who are watching, I want to pray for your confidence and for your faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. There are others who need to come. I want to pray for your faith. The ministers, you all come. I need you all to come. Ministers, ministers, pastors, elders, deacons, you all who are in here, I need you all to come. We're going to pray for your faith. We're not going to lay hands on you. We're going to intercede for your faith and your confidence. Just come. Just come, ministers. Just come on the front here. <laughs> Minister Betty, just come. We're going to pray for your faith. Hallelujah. Your confidence. You got it. Now it's time to start using it. On the count of three, we're going to start praying, interceding for your faith and your confidence. At least a couple of more people need to come so we can pray for your faith and your confidence. Your faith and your confidence. Hallelujah. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. One, two, three, let's pray. Those of you who are on the altar here, praying with those ministers, you all just intercede for them. Strong prayers. The Bible talks about strong prayers your faith and your confidence in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you just as that man said, I believe, help my own belief. We decree and declare that every person who's on this altar will believe and know that it is according to my faith that it will be done to me. No more unbelief in the name of Jesus. No more unbelief in the name of Jesus. You'll say it, you'll see it. And the power of God operating in you and through you and the power of God working right now in the name of Jesus. And you will walk in authority right now in the name of Jesus. You will be everything that God said you could be. Your authority and power is increasing even more and more and more and more. And God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you for the authority and the power that you've given us and to those who have come. And Father, we thank and praise you, O oh God, that they will begin to see your power operating. As we pray for them, as we pray for those who are here, and as we pray for those who are online, God, we thank you that they will see the change, that they will see the difference, that they will see your power working in their lives. That when we command a thing, that it will happen in the name of Jesus. But you have given us power over all the power of the enemy. You've given us power. And those who have come, Father God, we thank you that they will use that authority and use that power.
more and more and more and we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now just lift your voice and begin to give God praise lift your voice and begin to give God glory give God glory give God praise 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 he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be glorified he is worthy to be worshiped God we praise you we magnify you we thank you we worship you we honor you in the name of Jesus Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship around your word and that this week will be the beginning of weeks. We walk in power and authority and we cast out unclean spirits. You've shown us how to do it in Mark 9. We will live out Mark 9 in our lives this week. And God, we thank you and praise you and magnify you that you will show yourself strong through us as we call out and cast out, as we cast out, not just call out, but as we cast out unclean spirits in any area any aspect of our lives and we give you the praise in advance for that great peace in Jesus name amen traveling grace be with you in good portion